Um, hi, I'd like to uh, present some research that um, uh, we've recently completed. And uh, the idea with this presentation is not really to go into the research details. Uh, more, it's, uh, I'd like to, to present some ideas, some findings, present some food for thought, and, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, get some discussion going. So we've worked on creative uh, uh, approaches to archaeological tourism using intangible uh, aspects of uh, archaeological heritage. So archaeological tourism is broadly defined as activities that take place at historical sites, archaeological sites. So people uh, uh, visiting archaeological sites and engaging with the materiality of that, of that place. And it's very strongly based on this assumption of, uh, on the d definition of archaeological heritage as a tangible, as a tangible resource. However, archaeology goes, goes uh, uh, much more beyond uh, materiality. And, uh, and there are many intangible aspects that remain after physical destruction has occurred. We've seen cases where of environmental change or uh, 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 situations of uh, uh, war and armed conflict where historical sites are, are, are destroyed. Uh, more commonly, you find the growth of developer funded archaeology uh, creates massive knowledge of, uh, of, uh, uh, of archaeological sites and archaeological reports where the majority of these sites are usually lost uh, to give way to the project uh, uh, development. So to make things clear, we've called this intangible archaeological heritage, so meaning tangible heritage which has lost its uh, tangible counterpart. Um, so these monuments and this intangible heritage, uh, archaeological heritage, is mostly overlooked by conventional archaeological tourism, which is very strongly attached to the definition of archaeological heritage as a, as a tangible resource. And when the, when the material aspects are lost, uh, the traditional aspect, uh, the traditional value of archaeological heritage is, is, uh, is uh, perceived as lost as well. So we had this question, how can, uh, in essence, how can you do archaeological, uh, archaeological tourism without visiting an archaeological uh, site. Um, there are cases, and we've seen cases, uh, where you can create museum uh, exhibitions. This has been shown all throughout the presentations throughout the day. Um, you can create museum exhibitions, uh, virtual reconstructions, even physical reconstructions. Uh, but these activities are beyond the reach of cultural tourism uh, businesses, which are usually micro companies of one, two, three people. So how can a tour guide uh, use the, this archaeological knowledge and uh, intangible aspects of archaeological heritage to create uh, experiences without visiting an archaeological site. So just to give a, a brief overview of where and why we, 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 we did this research, uh, uh, the research setting was in the Alentejo region in southern Portugal. And this is a cultural tourism destination, a uh, very rural area uh, where the tourism identity and the tourism promotion is very, very based on uh, these elements of rural life, uh, living heritage, historical monuments, and uh, plenty of archaeological uh, heritage. Uh, so the region is a hot spot for uh, megalithic monuments in, in, uh, in uh, the Iberian Peninsula. And there's plenty of Roman uh, uh, heritage, uh, Islamic period heritage, uh, medieval heritage as well. In 2002, this region saw the birth of the Al Kiva Dam, and uh, this created a massive uh, uh, reservoir and irrigation system that spanned uh, approximately, um, it affected about 100,000 uh, hectares. And this whole region, this entire region, was surveyed uh, uh, by uh, archaeological companies, and uh, uh, a huge wealth uh, of knowledge was created about the, the region, and it kind of changed the way that the, the region is, uh, the, the past of the region is perceived. Um, however, most of the sites that were studied uh, were destroyed, were either uh, submerged or destroyed. Um, so we were, we were faced with how can the cultural tourism companies in this, in this region uh, make use of, this, of, the, of all this knowledge to create uh, and enhance their, their, their business. So we looked at the, 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 the spectrum of, of tourism and we, we came across the, the, the concept of creative tourism, which is a branch of cultural tourism that emphasizes tourist participation. 
So the main aims here are to provide an experience that is able to explore the, the creative potential of the tourist, uh, 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 give the tourist an opportunity to develop new skills, to learn new knowledge in a creative way and enable some kind of self-expression and uh, uh, um, uh, transformation of, of, of uh, personal identity. So the focus is very much on the individual experience uh, rather than an exterior element. Um, so it's not so much a visit to an archaeological site or historical site to consume uh, uh, and admire the, the material fabric and consume an interpretation that's been devised by, by heritage professionals and archaeologists. It's more uh, an approach that looks at how um, a tourist perceives uh, the significance of a site and places it within uh, their own worldview. So, key elements in, create, in creative tourism are, are two. Uh, uh, so it assumes that um, uh, both actors, both tourist providers and, and uh, tourists have some sort of uh, creative uh, inclination. And this is something that everyone has, but in different uh, levels or in different ways that is expressed. And also an aspect of uh, co-creation, which is uh, about involving tourists in the experience, uh, um, understanding um, how to engage the, 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 them in a more deeper way, so using their values, their beliefs, their prior knowledge as resources to create uh, and, and develop a, a, a deeply emotional uh, and, in, in, and in an engaging experience. So one thing we found is that there's an incredible appeal in the loss of of uh, heritage. So the physical, the, the act of physical destruction of, a, of, a, of an archaeological site from a tourism perspective adds to the story of the monument uh, rather than depletes its value. Um, so the archaeological and the historical interest is still there, but also the events that led to a monument's loss are able to uh, inform a narrative that, that uh, is uh, appealing to, to, to tourists. In some cases, uh, this destruction process becomes the, the focal point of the, of, the, of the narrative. So you have cases like the Bamiyan Buddhas in, in Afghanistan, which after being uh, uh, bombed and destroyed, uh, started getting much more visitors to the, to the area where the statues used to, um, used to stand. And in fact, the, 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 the statues were inscribed in the UNESCO World Heritage List after they were destroyed. Uh, you also have cases like Dagerland, uh, you have this massive region uh, that's been submerged and uh, uh, a very powerful uh, uh, element in, this, in, in the story of Doggerland is the, is, the, is the events that led to the, to the um, submersion of the, of the region. So in our case we found uh, the Castle of Loza, which is a Roman fortified uh, villa uh, in the Alentejo region. And, it, uh, and, and this site uh, was located nearby the river and is currently underwater. It's, it's been submerged by the reservoir of the, of, the, um, of the dam. Before submersion, the developers chose to uh, encapsulate the monument, as you can see in the top left. Um, developers chose to encapsulate the monument in this layer of sandbags and cement in order to protect the monument and keep it intact under the water, protect it from underwater erosion. Um, now, what's interesting is that uh, uh, tours taking place on the margins of, of the lake uh, uh, emphasize this project, uh, this process of, uh, of encapsulation. And uh, in fact, what, what tourists uh, question most and what they're most interested or what they show most interest in is the fact that uh, is the story of the, of the, of the loss. Uh, physical loss of this uh, monument and how it's not in, uh, accessible nowadays and um, how it's kept uh, under, uh, under the water. Ironically, the monument before uh, uh, submersion, when it was still accessible, it was mostly ignored uh, uh, by tourism in, the, in the, uh, the region. Another case, not of physical destruction, but of kind of a conceptual loss, is the Shrish Kromlekt. And this is a square cromlech uh, that was uh, located in an area that was going to be submerged. And project developers uh, decided to relocate the, the monument to a higher ground. Um, tour guides that we spoke to argued that the monument has lost its archaeological value. It's lost its original context, its astronomical alignment. 
Uh, however, they still take uh, tourists to, to the monument. They still pass by the monument and still take them there. And what they speak about when they visit the monument is this process of relocation and this conceptual loss. So uh, the mon monument has apparently lost its authenticity, but it still uh, uh, remains uh, valid and, and uh, um, its potential for tourism uh, is still there. So providers can take these stories and this appeal of loss to create uh, 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 to create narratives that uh, that uh, engage the the the, the tourists, uh, um, particularly using heritage interpretation strategies that invite tourist participation, uh, encouraging discourse and encouraging sharing of ideas about uh, what uh, uh, what tourists are are thinking. Um, so this idea of, of provoking uh, thought and uh, creativity in, um, uh, in tourists' minds, rather than just instructing uh, 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 common, uh, uh, a common interpretation. So this can be used by using, uh, for example, problem-solving situations. So asking, asking tourists, uh, what would you do uh, if, you, if you had a chance, um, uh, decision-making power, or how do you think uh, uh, the monument is is kept, or how, how do you think the memory will will survive after after um, this monument has been um, lost? Uh, offering multiple interpretations, so not 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 sticking to only one, but but, but offering uh, different interpretations and different evidence to tourists, so that they can, uh, according to their own uh, 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 values and their uh, worldview, they can they can devise a. a, a um, an interpretation uh, of the monument for themselves. Focus on, also on the big picture. Uh, um, I found uh, uh, tour guides using um, uh, doing visits to uh, megalithic monuments and um, not really talking about the monument itself or details about the monument. Uh, rather, uh, what's what's most important in that experience is uh, is uh, talking about the Neolithic Revolution or. Uh, the economic and the cultural transitions that were taking place. So these kinds of things draw attention away from from the from the site itself and and uh, and uh, engage the, the the tourist in thinking and sense making on a, on a on a broader level. Another thing that uh, can be done is is all sorts of themed activities. So using the knowledge that has been retrieved from. Uh, uh, um, uh, sites that have been uh, uh, destroyed to create experiences that relate to the past. Uh, these, of course, do not require interaction with uh, original artifacts or, or, or the site itself. Um, so, for example, creating ex experimental archaeology workshops, um, using knowledge about uh, a diet of Neolithic communities uh, that were found in the region, using that to create a, a, a kind of a paleo diet uh, cooking workshop, which is uh, very in fashion nowadays, or enhancing boat tours. Um, there are boat tours on this lake. Uh, the tour guides often mention uh, archaeology, uh, uh, archaeological monuments that were that were submerged, and this creates uh, 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 an added element to the to the to the boat tour experience. It enriches the experience. So it's this idea that. Uh, uh, Intangible archaeological heritage can enhance uh, or complement uh, resources or products that are that would exist uh, on their own. Um, so the lake is not just a lake; it's a lake with uh, a wealth of uh, archaeological heritage submerged, and that, uh, from a marketing point of view, is uh, uh, has incredible value. So what we're trying to do is to highlight uh, uh, opportunities and the potential of uh, of uh, these intangible aspects of archaeological heritage, and uh, um, uh, uh, presenting co-creative archaeological tourism as a, as something that uses material loss to stimulate uh, creative experience, creative engagement uh, in tourists, uh, we argue that it also offers new options for the preservation of uh, of the memory of uh, archaeological heritage which has been destroyed. And it complements rather than uh, sub uh, substitutes. So the point is to 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 argue for a complete change on, on the way archaeological tourism is is, uh, is done. Rather, it's it's we're trying to shed light on a resource that has mostly been overlooked, and it still has value to complement and enhance uh, um, 
current approaches to archaeological tourism. So for tourism providers, what this means is uh, it can inform uh, product diversification. It can add to their portfolio uh, of experiences and their offer, or can it enhance products that they uh, already have. Uh, for local communities, the, these kind of initiative, initiatives can uh, provide a, a, a further way to preserve the memory associated to uh, heritage which has been lost um, in, the, in the region. And also for developers, uh, this could work as a tool uh, uh, for, to, to, to help with uh, impact minimization and, and give some benefits um, to, uh, uh, from, the, from the environmental impact assessments. So we've identified three requirements to, 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 to get such an approach to be, to be successful. Uh, first, there's a need for training for tourism actors. Um, a kind of assessment of, of, uh, of creative skills of tourism uh, providers, understanding uh, what kind of uh, uh, traits uh, each actor has, how can they uh, best make use of these to, uh, uh, to make the most of uh, intangible archaeological heritage, and also uh, uh, training on the strategies and implications of co-creation. So it's not only knowing how to, to, how to do a, a co-creative approach, it's understanding what that implies. Um, that when you use uh, tourists' um, values, their beliefs, their prior knowledge to create uh, an experience, that will, that will change the, the, the overall tone and the final output of an experience. So it's this ability you have to be open to negotiate and accept different uh, uh, interpretations and different views of, uh, of uh, an archaeological site and of the past. Second, a, a greater uh, collaboration between uh, stakeholders um, which are not traditionally uh, uh, associated. So project developers and uh, cultural tourism businesses are not usually that much in touch. Um, however, with a, a great understanding of the potential of, 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 uh, of intangible archaeological heritage, that could um, create situations of win-win uh, for both, for both uh, actors. And this could be uh, probably stimulated or mediated by, uh, uh, by local tur tourism authorities or local uh, heritage uh, actors or specific uh, NGOs, for example. And finally, it requires an understanding that the value and the role of heritage is not confined to its physical fabric. So, um, um, I'm sure everyone, uh, everyone is, is working towards the preservation of, uh, of, um, of uh, heritage, um, but we do accept that uh, archaeological heritage is destroyed every day. And so this would be uh, a form of uh, taking that as an opportunity and, and preserving the memory associated to the, to the material uh, destruction. I thank you and I would love to leave, uh, hear any comments.